All right, so we just got off 278, and we're actually 0.8 miles from the Revel DC fast charge uh, Super Hub. Five minutes to go, our battery's at 21%, so if we got this right, we should arrive at 20%, and that was quite the challenge. So another tip, you gotta put 472 Marcy Ave in your GPS. You put anything else, it has you enter from the wrong side and you can't get in. We learned that hard, the hard way earlier. So you'll see we kind of go around the building. If I turn on GPS view, that's the Pfizer building that we're going to. So we were here earlier, we had too much battery. Uh, we killed some time at a Home Depot and there was a Revel employee. He mentioned that the food court and facilities like bathrooms are not open yet. So keep that in mind. Um, not too much near it that looked uh, suitable, so we just drove onward. Anyhow, if you look back over here, you'll see we're only 0.2 miles away. Our battery's at 21%. We're in great shape to arrive right at 20% with the plan to charge to 80%. Trying to reflect uh, what a family might do on a road trip where they want that little extra buffer and people might get nervous at 10 or 15%. Turn left onto Marcy Avenue. Uh, also, I asked the employee. Now you have arrived at your destination. Does this place um, stay open, the gate? And he said, yes, 24 seven, open to the public. Are you allowed to leave your car there? No, there was, so then again, an employee was there and he's probably still there. And he actually told me where to park when I pulled back in. The lights just turned on, so they got motion detection going at night to make you uh, feel safer. And um, gonna back the car in and we're at 21%, so we have a little more to kill. There's someone else in their Model Y. Let's do a little tour here. And that's it, so there was a blue Revel vehicle earlier. I'll probably cut over to a still photo I took of it. And um, that was an employee. He mentioned the employees charge from like um, employees charge something like midnight to six or seven. He wasn't quite sure. He also wasn't really able to talk to a uh, videographer, press, whatever you want to call it. And he acknowledged the lights go on and off like you just witnessed. <laughs> So the lights are so bright that it tricks the system to thinking it's daylight and they go back off again. So they have a little uh, night illumination challenge they're dealing with. Anyhow, no big deal. Um, all noteworthy little things if you're trying to visit, especially in these opening days. And here it is. Hang on. Okay, we're backing up. And at this point, I'm just going to grab the camera and we'll start charging. We're still at 21. We've got a little more to kill, so let's pause the video while we kill a little bit of battery. And actually, I'm going to show you how we did this earlier today. What we found is, go to this screen on this OBD reader app. That's a mere 14, uh, 1500 watts. So what we learned is the maximum energy was used, it's got seat heaters on, sure. HVAC on feet was a reasonable volume, not so crazy loud when driving the car, and you got all the way to the max 3600. Sorry, when putting it on the lowest setting possible. So you go to low, you go to feet only, crank it up to 10, and you get all the way to 3600 with reasonable comfort. And that helped us uh, burn off some battery there. Uh, while we're doing that, we can look at the battery. So let's see what the temperature is. 108, nice and toasty, that's excellent. And we're at 20. Let's turn this off at the beginning of the charge session. Let's have a look at the battery here, and we're about to see some charging stats. We're gonna go to battery on my OBD detector there and time to charge let's head on out so nfc should be my payment method is what the employee said and today is the very first day for that to work so here we go you'll see they have ccs clearly labeled and this funny adapter yep what you're looking at is chatamo to Tesla. But to uh, not annoy my wife any further at this late hour, I think it's time to start actually charging. So let's wrestle that off there. And we got lights now. Wow, that's a long leash. So you have plenty of flexibility to park your car even in the wrong spot. Wow. Okay, so very generous cable link there. And a uh, little tricky with one hand. Microphone going. Push the button. Here we go. Probably nothing's going to happen because I haven't provided payment yet. Yep, no power yet, so we got to provide payment. Please pay. Let's have a look here. Get the exposure right. All right, so I'm going to do NFC. So I'm going to double tap my watch. 
Okay, credit cards being presented. Well, let's have a go at it. So Pater is the brand here. Having a little trouble with NFC. Nothing much happening. Where's the reader? Let's see what the screen says. Anything? Whew, that's not doing anything. Let's see if we can get another one to go. Connect plug. Cool. So these might be teething pains. Who knows? But looks like we have one charger that simply didn't work. I'm going to um, move the car. So I figured out what happened. I lost some footage when I moved the car. Uh, I got near the NFC reader and it botched the recording and stopped the iPhone. But anyhow, the reason this is green now <laughs> is I plugged in here and at first I used my watch and I had American Express on the screen for Apple Pay. Didn't like that. It said use another card. So I went ahead and swiped on my watch to change cards and it worked with a Visa card just fine. And it said, you know, payment processed. Then I was ready. It said plug in car, plugged in the car, and then it started. Now a couple things were noticed in the footage that was lost. And that was, we started at 20%. So it does sync with the car and the percentage. It shows amperage and volts, which is cool. Shows minutes charging and then how many kilowatts have been delivered. And this number doesn't really match. So if we look at it, it says 42 kilowatts here. And whether the AC on or off in the car doesn't seem to matter. 42 kilowatts there becomes... 33 kilowatts here and if we turn off so 44 it's quite a difference also it said 55 minutes in the beginning and still saying 55 minutes now about five minutes later oh well the other thing i was explaining in the last footage was just the battery brick temperature because we didn't set this as a destination for charging it doesn't do any kind of preconditioning but at these slow charge rates that wouldn't matter at all um so yeah what i've learned here is this number doesn't match at all and actually it started at I think 36 kilowatts and it's dropping. Ooh. Oh dear. <laughs> All right. Uh, given how late it is, I may end up, you know, giving up and charging at another supercharge or something. We'll see. I don't know why that number just dropped. 20. Let's go look at the meter out there. See if there's any message. 27. So yeah, that's not great. So I might want to just try it another meter. 24, continuing to drop. So is this thing getting hot? I don't know. I don't feel any fans on there. Don't know. But I think I'm going to need to give up on this test of how long charging takes from 20 to 80 because it's too late at night to endure this. I really need to try another charger. So let's, uh, let's move right along. So uh, to stop charging, let's see what happens. What happens when you touch these buttons? Nothing. Uh, sorry. Um, nothing's touch screen on there, by the way. Just my fingerprints now. So let's stop charging. Okay, turn blue, push the button. Cool. All right. Hang this up. A little awkward again with one hand with the camera, but that worked. And what's it say? It's telling us to return the plug. All right, moving to the next spot. All right, so here we are at the charger. I moved to another spot. So we went to a whole other area where the whole row is empty. There's almost no one else here, just one other car. So now let's get into payment processing. But instead, let's follow the directions perfectly and see. It says connect plug. Cool. Back up a little. I'll go ahead and connect the Tesla plug now. And we're in a spot that doesn't have a Tesla plug. Oops, the guy did warn me these last two spots are leaf only for now. They got the label wrong, so my apologies. Got to move the car over two spots. So a quick overview of the place. All the charges are identical. He said he suggested charging over there. I'm not sure why, maybe considered faster. Here's where the employee was charging earlier in a blue Revel. And the last two spots are for Nissan Leaf, as I mentioned. They got 23 charging stalls now. 24 and 25 are right there coming soon. They just didn't quite finish them yet. All right, let's get to it. So it says connect plug. 
So I know the drill now. This is now the third attempt, two of which are recorded. Good thing is you'll get to see me doing the payment processing as well. All right. Plug connected. Success. Next, let's pay. Please pay. All right, so tapping this again. Can't really get that on camera. Or can I? Uh, no, I can't. Just double tap my watch. The card it doesn't like. Try another card. Swipe to another card. Here we go. Get the screen to show. Beautiful. Payment accepted. Heard a little relay click. That means blue should change soon. So we get the exposure right so you can actually see that other screen. And it's green. Nice. So look at the stats. 44 kilowatts. Really was hoping to see 50. <laughs> so that Chatamo connector there, I guess that's all it can do. Um, I hear a fan starting. And again, we've got Oh, the fan's in my car. No, let's see, where's the fan? The back. So I can see a radiator in there. Looks like a car radiator. Dissipating heat, I don't have my FLIR thermal camera with me. Um, but hopefully we don't experience another slowdown. <laughs> we'll see. And uh, let's see, again, 44 kilowatts on the outside becomes Thirty-seven inside, and if we turn the HVAC, probably doesn't make any difference. No, nope. so we're looking at fifty minutes. So hopefully, this charger goes well. Hopefully, no one pulls in right next to us and starts charging. There are now um, four other cars, so who knows what'll happen next? But certainly learned a few things. While that's charged in a way, let's have a look at the Chatamo connector. And luckily it's staying at 44 kilowatts. So we'll go to the next spa here and see how is it locked. Uh, um, well, because you can't push the switch is how it's locked, so I don't know, they got a special handle here. The Chatamo connector straight up Tesla part there. I think. Here's the label on this side. Japan Aviation Electronics. So, I would say, well, I just don't know. Sure looks like a Tesla handle, Tesla style, the button, everything. Even the ribs on the back and the catch there. Let's have a look. And there we go. That's the label I was looking for. Okay, so there's the part number and it's definitely a Tesla part. It doesn't say any kind of spec as far as, you know, maximum and whatnot. Um, again, a little difficult to wrestle into place. Um, kind of a two-handed operation, I would say, for making it a whole lot easier. Doing a quick look at the entire Rebel station here without showing anyone's license plates. So I just put my card in for another person here. Can you just show me your screen and your phone? What was the error? So you got payment processing through, but you had this nasty error right after it was supposed to start charging. And yay! Nope, oh, it it again. God, again. Yep, does it again. All right, Revel, here's a little feedback for you. If I try to do Apple Pay, and many of the pumps tonight, pumps, the charging stations. Jeez. What I'm getting is service error, let me show you. So I'm going to use the Visa card that worked for my car. And we're going to move it close. 
and try to get the screen. Screen, service error, really hard to read. Here's another Model 3 and another error tonight at Revel. Charging equipment communication loss is what the app showed. Do you remember what the screen showed on the uh, Tritium charger band or no? Okay. All right, 11.04, so like a minute or two ago it finished. That's good. Let's have a look at the stats down here. And it says return plug finished. Okay, so it wants us to put the plug back in. 52 minutes, we'll see if that's accurate. We're at 81%. Did the car also say 81? I don't know. But um, it finished and the fan is roaring even more. So, we're going to take a moment to sum up the, how the Revel charging experience went today. Uh, for one, I met, I think, three to four different people. Um, two of them I got to know pretty well. On average, everyone had to move two or three, maybe even four times to get a charge going. One moved, I think, six times and I actually helped them by using my credit card. So, I'd say it was a pretty mixed uh, experience uh, for everybody with a variety of errors. What didn't happen is anyone just charging happily on the first shot. That's unfortunate. You expect that on a launch day, I get it, but the double whammy was there's no phone number, there's no employee on site like we had, I had seen earlier in the day, and unfortunately support at rebel.com didn't get back to you today, nor did the PR department. So I want, we're all gunning for them. Uh, the people I met want them to succeed. Two of them live in Brooklyn. They really want something local and convenient where you don't have to pay for a garage. So they're totally into the concept. And hopefully when they just get their payment system squared away, it might not really be a Revel thing. It might be the payment processor had an issue tonight. We just don't know. Um, but yeah, the gotcha is you got a bunch of people roaming around kind of late at night uh, with no recourse, no ability to figure out what's going on other than helping each other. And that was actually the cool thing. You had another person pay for someone else with his Apple card on his Apple Pay and his phone. That worked great. Uh, Red Model 3 was able to test the charge that way for the first time after four different movements of his car and attempting two different cars that he had. And then I did the same for another person that was uh, Brian that I interviewed there. This video is mostly focused on the DC fast charging experience and I would say most of what I learned or all of what I learned is about Tesla on another company's DC fast charging network with their Chatamo adapters. That's where we're leading edge here. First was guy in the country, a couple Nissan Leafs came, they seemed fine, they charged our rights. Um, they used the CCS connector. So specifically we're talking about Chatamo to Tesla adapter, maybe that's the problem. Another thing that was noted was Model Ys tended to charge faster than my Model 3, no idea why, even though I'm in a long range Model 3. Should have gotten the full uh, 50 kilowatts, I guess, the Chatamo adapter is capable of, although I never saw more than 47 on anyone's car, including the Model Ys. All right, I think I've covered everything I learned. The errors, I got a screenshot or two of people's phones, the errors, definitely some frustration, but mostly people just being really friendly to each other, hoping Revel succeeds. Oh yeah, the other thing, the test, the Revel app on Ryan's phone there, you know, wasn't able to submit a service ticket either. There was really no way to communicate with the company with charging or payment processing errors. And that's an issue where Electrify America, I believe, um, Kyle from Autospec Motoring has done a lot of videos there. Yeah, I believe there's phone numbers on those, although I've never tried one of their charges either, so. Um, Time of Logney is another web, uh, YouTube channel to check out, besides Kyle and Huffspeed Motoring. They've both done a lot of videos about Chatamo and Tesla to Chatamo adapters. This is my first experience trying either of those, so. Hard to say this early what the root problems were. Hopefully I'll soon know if I get a response from support at rebel.com. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.